Uh, it's, a, it's a very... Uh, and what's, oh, jeez. How do I even address this? So here's what happened, right? I talked about Ralph and how he turned on Nick Fuentes and how I, uh, for various reasons, um, tentatively support him in his endeavor to completely destroy America first and humiliate Nick, Nick Fuentes beyond any redemption. Uh, as far as that is concerned, I, I wish him the absolute best. Uh, there have been minor developments since last stream. Nothing as, as fun as, um, as what happened when he went to the America first thing. However, let me just sum this up real quick. Um, first of all, as he mentioned in the video, he is doing completely amnesty on all my enemies, America first and Nick Fuentes must be destroyed. So for the purposes of, uh, the Totalen Katzenjunge Krieg, he is, uh, Forgiving all of his enemies for sliding him. He is he has in if you have been convicted for wrongdoings against Ethan Ralph in the Ethan Ralph court of Ethan Ralph, uh, you have been granted presidential amnesty, um, except for Kino Casino and PPP and Andy Worski, uh, who definitely didn't want to talk to Ralph anyways. Uh, <laughs> and don't don't want to don't want to be his friend. Okay. So that's that's where we're up with the amnesty thing. As a result of this, uh, actually, uh, Godwinson shows up on his stream and he gets banned from Cozy. And Big Tech shows up on his stream to announce that he's done with America First. And that uh, um, I think he's also banned from Cozy. So Cozy is having a serious fucking issue where basically everyone is leaving their platform immediately. And uh, one the one person left who I'm kind of curious to see where it goes is Dick Masterson is a friend of Ethan Ralph, probably Ethan Ralph's the most long lasting genuine friend at this point in time. He streams on cozy exclusively for his, um, his weekly streams as far as I'm aware. So I'm kind of curious if Dick Masterson is going to say, you know, fuck cozy and switch over to rumble or if he's going to try to placate both sides or, or what, I don't know what to expect with that. Um, so that is the, the interesting thing about big tech is he's the one that kind of got me to fucking hate Nick Fuentes in the very recent, like before I was just kind of like, as ah, they're cringe, they're kind of gay. I think Nick Fuentes is like a bulimic homosexual in the closet. Uh, but it was big tech stream that really made me hate America first. Cause I, I'm watching it. And they're talking about um, this allegation towards Jaden's friend. If you don't know, Jaden is like an ex-friend of Nick Fuentes who joined uh, the dark side and went to PPP stream. And now he's like a regular guest on PPP's Kino Casino thing. And apparently he has like a friend named Ultros and they tried to set him up as like a pedophile. But like the tweets that they allege that he made are shit that they say all the time i i made a thread and i'm not going to show this thread uh, on stream and i don't want to vocalize any of the tweets that i screen capped but there is like a very real very sizable demographic of unapologetic pedophiles who are part of america first and they have a large social media presence because nick fuentes needs every single person in america first to signal boost his message and promote him and try to get him onto shows and uh, basically spread awareness that he exists when he has a very limited social media presence outside of his own websites. Um, and because of this, they have a very obvious and easily trackable history where they all interact with each other. And it's very, very easy to go to any post about Nick Fuentes that's positive. And just by looking at who liked it, find accounts that are like openly pro pedophilia. They openly talk about having sex with kids. Uh, it's not, it's not even like a, a, a joke. Like they're, they're just all about it. <laughs> and it's, they're talk that's big tech was like laughing about this and his chat was reacting very positively. And I'm like, Oh, so these people are just like completely masked off about this and, uh, fuck them basically, which is why I, I, I'm unironically rooting for Ralph to destroy all of them. Um, and, but so it's surprising to see, I guess big tech realized how bad it looked for him to like be talking about this and have his audience in support of 
in support of it because it is genuinely like stomach churning. Um, and you can see what the results are of Ralph leaving. I, I kind of want to, I, I don't know if I made this allegory before, but I'll make it again. It's like if Nick Fuentes was like the Tucker Carlson of Cozy, you still need all these other shows to make a 24 hour programming schedule for, for Fox news. If it was just Tucker Carlson and then 23 hours of silence for the rest of the broadcast, nobody would watch Fox news and Tucker Carlson would also lose steam. But without Ralph streaming like eight hours a day, every day, anytime you go to cozy, the numbers are like fucking abysmal. Yeah, politically provoked. Who's like a forty-year-old, uh, washed-up hag? I have no idea why the fuck she's on cozy, pandering to a bunch of young boys. But she has n literally nothing interesting to say ever. Then you have, uh, like Alex Jones restreams. Some guy named Brosif, who's like America First, and they all get sub one hundred numbers. There's nobody on this fucking platform. Uh, as much as as much as it's fun to like shit on Ralph and like point out how his numbers have gone down over time, he was uh, unironically, at least uh, in some ways, for a lot of the Zoomers on this uh, or the America First people on this platform, like something to put on in the background just so that the TV is tuned to Fox News, so that when Tucker Carlson comes on, uh, they're there for that. But without without people to actually generate content for the the platform, they're just not there. It's uh, it's crazy. Um, so I, I don't see how Nick Fuentes can like pull out of this death spiral. And the, the, the thing is, is that he thinks the death spiral is going to be, um, if there is one is going to be like a direct hit where he does like a nosedive and then all the hardcore pedophiles who support him, uh, um, with like maximum loyalty are going to flake off of his movement. That's not what it's going to be. I can tell you what it's going to be. And it's what you see uh, happening in real time is that people who value their themselves and their personal reputation and their ability to go out and network and enrich themselves and profit off what they do are going to see associating with Nick Fuentes as a liability, not because he is pro-white or pro-Catholic or, or a nationalist or whatever, but because he is surrounded by a fucking deviant that he refuses to denounce. He refuses to tell, like, he refuses to tell them, not even to tell them off, like, completely, like, fuck off, I don't want you in the movement. He refuses to even say, can you not go on Twitter and then tweet, um, I love raping kids, the age of consent should be 12, and then posting, like, pregnant pictures of anime children, and then also, by the way, everyone watched this Nick Fuentes stream. He's like saying, don't, he's not even saying, don't do that, you're embarrassing me. He refuses to even address it. So, uh, like that, that is the end of America first. It's not going to be, oh, he said, you know, something about the mustache man and uh, waving your arms at him in a specific way. It's going to be, oh, he's literally like scum of the fucking earth and catering to um like sexual deviants like the only people who i guess can align with his sexual identity as a closet homosexual are people who are like sadists um so on that note there was a the big happening was an 11 i think like 11 hour stream from leafy is here now i don't know anything about Leafy. I, I had heard that he left. The first time I heard about Leafy was that he had left the internet years ago because iDubbbz did a big expose video where he made fun of his chin and his stupid way of talking. And Leafy disappeared for years and years. And he came back only recently, I want to say this year, um, to uh, rekindle his, his presence through um, new alt tech, like Elon Musk's Twitter and uh, Rumble and so on and so forth. He has a deal with Rumble. He's verified. And so I, I don't know, I heard of him and I heard her that he was like anti trans or whatever on Twitter and was catching a lot of attention. So I was just like, whatever, I wish him the best. Uh, I have now listened to Leafy while I was developing my, my stream Nexus uh, chat, which you now see on the screen. I was using his rumble chat, which was going a million miles a second to try and test the scraping ability of what I had developed. And after being exposed to him for several hours, I can now say um, that Leafy is perhaps 
the biggest fucking retard I've ever heard. Um, this guy is not only retarded, he is not only one of the most inarticulate people I've ever heard. Uh, he knows that he's retarded and he is, he deliberately plays up the fact that he's a fucking retard. So let me put it this way. Uh, I'll play a couple seconds of him actually. Um, so you can get a, a baseline understanding of how he talks. And then I'll try to explain what he's doing as I understand it. Uh, straight up. She threw a beer at my fucking window and keyed my car. Yeah. And they were like, good. That's awesome. Yay. You know, the guy that was saying all gay people go to hell. Yes. He is, you know, now someone has attacked his car. Where are these people's cars? I want to find them and I want to attack their cars and I want to see how they fucking react. I pick this at random. But, way. um, yeah. Back to the thing. Um, they've tried reporting me like a thousand times. I mean, just go through my Twitter. I've already fucking covered everything about this topic imaginable. Right? But the, at this point, they have see, officially... This guy thinks that this is a bit... The thing is, is that it's not. He is... He is probably has an ambient IQ of about 70 to 80 somewhere in there but he knows he's stupid he his saving grace in his entertainment persona is that he knows he's a fucking moron and he probably learned this in school because i remember when i was in school you know how in school you always have the retard kids who are always in trouble well the retard kids i noticed um one of them would do this thing where he would do something that he knew was bad or stupid and then he would play up how stupid he is be like i just didn't know if, if i didn't know it was an accident and lying that he did something intentionally but just pretended that he was stupid because the teachers already knew that he was stupid so he probably learned this trick in grade school and now he goes on stream and this is his whole stream this is like the entire six hours of like the well not the entire thing but for like the first two hours just like Fucking like fucking uh fucking you know fucking Ralph I, I, who's Ralph I don't fucking like fucking I don't know I just fucking like started the fucking stream and like I don't know who the fucking Ralph is like who the fuck is Ralph chat says, Ralph Ralph Nick run it's like a fucking tug of war in my fucking chat like fucking and just like doing that over and over like like oh I'm so gormless I'm so idiotic and uninformed I'm such a fucking moron ah geez i'm so stupid would it would be a real shame if all these people if keemstar and ethan ralph and nick fuentes and sneeko and Jaden all got on my stream and and persuaded me to their side because i'm just i'm just so naive i'm such a dumb little shit i don't know what's happening if only these people were to get on my stream and give me an audience of thousands of viewers in real time that were tipping me hundreds of dollars to try and persuade me to see things their side what do you think chat what do you think oh retard dono for a hundred says support nick mm, i'm really supporting nick for winters ah dumb motherfucker for 50 says support ralph ah, i didn't know that about nick oh geez oh man oh motherfucker for a hundred back again saying support nick for real ralph is also bad mm, damn dude damn shit motherfucking like shit man fuck i didn't think of fucking like that man fuck and that was it. That was the entire show for six hours. It was like being pummeled in the fucking skull with a brick continuously. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that people watch this shit continuously. And it was uh, like, it, yes, it is in a, in a way it's a bit, but the bit is the grift. The, the dumb motherfucker running the OBS who can't figure out a pop filter, who has a, a you know, you can't do anything right. Can't figure out freaking out about links. Oh, I might get swatted. If I click this link, I don't know what a VPN. I'm just a helpless little dumb motherfucker. I can't even wipe my own asshole without my state sponsored uh, nurse doing it for me. I'm just so fucking idiotic like that. That's like part real. Like I, I'm, I'm out of my depth. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a retard. I don't want to have to form opinions, but I realize if I play it up a certain way, people will give me money. Uh, so fuck Leafy. Fuck anyone who associates with this retard. Um, he is very strictly on Nick Fuentes' side. He uh, he knew enough that when anybody brought up the fact that Nick Fuentes basically covered for Ali uh, Ali Akbar and uh, allowed Smiley to be sexted by uh, Smiley and others to be sexted by um, by Ali Akbar, who. Uh, he continued to purport as like a leader of America first to get it into Kanye's political movement and shit. He would just deflect. Sneeko knew, or not Sneeko, but Leafy knew to deflect 
when those things came up that he didn't have an answer to and that Nick Flint, that he didn't want Nick Flint to address. So like just like he has, he, okay. Imagine this. He has a low number of IQ points, but he has statted all his IQ points into manipulation and deception. He, he's too stupid to know anything except how to persuade people into thinking that he is genuine. That's it. That's his, that's his one trick. Um, so if you are listening to this and you're someone, God forbid, who's like an e-celebrity, do not fucking associate with this retard. He will, he is a time bomb. This man is human wreckage who is looking for a shore to crash on at this point. Um, so. Uh, breaking, breaking. Okay. I, I have seen this Troon picture before. I don't know if this is leafy. I'm going to show this, uh, but keep in mind, I don't know if this is actually leafy. I will, I will put this on screen um, for the benefit of my audience because it is funny. There's another picture that I can't show you. However, wait, I just saw it. Here we go. I don't. Okay. Let's, let's do a leafy thing. You ready? Okay. Chat press one. If you think this is leafy sweet or as he's now known, sweepy, sweepy is here. Sweeping, sweeping for Nick. Press one if you think this is leafy. Press two if you think that this is just a doppelganger, uh, a chinless doppelganger, who just so happens to look like leafy. I, I, I am seeing a literal tsunami of ones. Usually, even when um, I do these, there's like a couple people who type like sevens and stuff. It took like a good twenty seconds for like the 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 twos and other numbers to show up. It was all ones. It continues to be mostly ones. There's another picture I can't show you. Wait, hold up. I saw I saw a message from someone who might be inclined to know more. I don't know who the fuck Kayakosaurus is, but he is verified. And for some reason, he's in my chat and he says one. And then Turkey Tom says, isn't that from the nudes leak? Well, it might be because I have another picture, Turkey Tom, of this man's anus. Uh, it, is a, it is a proper PPP bent over starfish image. Um, dangling balls like right up in my face. I can't show this on stream. <laughs> my, I hate this guy so much that I'm trying to think. I, I probably shouldn't. I probably shouldn't share that because that might come back on me. However, supposedly, there is an image of uh, Leafy is here's starfish. So if you want to know, that's why I say he is like a retard. But at the same time, he is probably, he is like manipulative. The, the anus one is not him. That's fake, you dick. Dude, the anus one looks like him the most. What are you saying it's not him? This doesn't. This looks less like him than the butthole picture. I believe that's him. It's even in the butthole picture. He's even covering his. Even though he's like bent over and taking a picture of himself through his legs, he's covering his chin with the camera. You can't fake that. You can't pretend that's somebody else. That is bona fide leafy Photoshop right there. <laughs> I, I I believe it. I'm a I'm a I'm a starfish believer, chat. Dude, Keem on the train. Look, look, the the video of Keem Star sodomizing himself on the hood of a car with a very large dildo is fake, but it's very convincing. This this I don't know. This is this looks like him. I'm just gonna say, I don't. But you're gonna you're gonna say the okay. So the the Troon picture is real. Let's get the Troon picture back up. Let's zoom in. Turkey Tom informs me that this is real. This is from the nudes leak, but the anus picture is not from the nudes leak. Okay. All right. All right. I'm fine. Who's in now? Miss Italy bans transgender competitors. Patron and contestants say it must be a woman from birth. Okay, fine. I got you. Yeah, I don't think I can show those. I, uh, I uh, Turkey Tom sent me the picture of Keemstar on train tracks, but there's like another video of him in, in a car that's much more convincing. He's got the same kind of goatee. I don't know why there's like a pornographer lookalike for um for uh for Keemstar, but there is. I guess every every celebrity has like their porno 
like doppelganger that they cast. Like Kingstar has his own. It's very shocking. I guess Leafy has his own too. Um, it's an AI. <laughs> that thing has been around for like ten years, bro. All right. Why do I have butthole pictures on my computer? I don't. I didn't until people sent them to me and said, "Throw this starfish up on your screen." It's it's need to know information. All right, but okay, this is what I wanted to say, right? This is my rant. Um, it's very hard for me to to see people because the America First thing is incredibly depressing to me because I know that there are probably a lot of people who want to support Nick Fuentes because he's of their generation. He is really he really tried for a while to be like a real political person. And they're thinking like, we need like a hard pivot in our society. And if we don't get it now, you know, it, it's over. It's, it's, it's so over. And they, they think that this guy is going to like elevate them or achieve their political goals for whatever reason. So they support him. And then they're like thrown in to this, this shit where you have like this sussy squad that's doing all sorts of covert shit. I I don't want to say it because people get mad at me. I believe that they do other shit, but then I there's like clearly like a a genuine pedophile like group in in their ranks that Nick Fuentes is fully aware of and fully enables. And you're gonna have people who are gonna fuck up their whole lives and develop like pornography addictions and get into child pornography because of America First. And all they wanted to do was find some sort of white light or white pill to keep them through the, like the depression of being a teenager and seeing current day society and find the, the energy to not like immediately kill yourself because it's so fucking over. You know what I mean? It's, it is genuinely like sickening and I, I wish nothing but the worst for Nick Fuentes. Uh, I, I really hate him. And then you have all these, these other people watching leafy who is like 30 years old. He's 30 years old. He still fucking acts like this. He hasn't grown up like a day at all and he's just like a gormless idiot and somehow this guy is just which is proof that you do not need to be uh smart or uh or intentionally funny or clever or talented in any way shape and form as long as you can turn on a camera run obs and make people laugh either direct or you know inadvertently or or uh deliberately like people will watch you 30 year old man yeah he's a 30 year old i remember that from the i just he's a 30 year old man he's a 30 year old man and he acts like a fucking kid he acts like a little dipshit motherfucker and he can't even he he's less articulate than like a teenager a teenager can usually string together his symptoms he, he can't go several words without randomly interjecting a fucking it's a fucking fucking it's so shameful and people watch this I hope that nobody like unironically supports them. I hope that it's all like kayfabe when they just say, I want to see my pet retard dance like a monkey for me. But then you have like the, uh, oh, I remember what the, the core of my, um, my rant was going to be. I don't know what has happened because Matt Walsh is talking about it. Nick Fuentes is obsessed with it. Uh, I, I don't know what Leafy has said on it, but I, 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 I would take a bet and I have a feeling I would know what he said about it. But there was like an obsession with young men right now trying to min max their like their fantasy wife's fertility and there's like an obsession with we need to lower the age of consent we need to make if i'm i can get married at any time i can get married at 40 years old because i can, i'm a man i can still you know knock up a 15 year old girl that i imported from you know the philippines and then i can uh you know no worries and that's the the peak age it's like an obsession with trying to have a relationship with young like little girls who are not done with puberty and i don't know what the fuck it is like it's all happened at once it's like the the peak age for having kids is like 24 to 34. There is no issues having kids of that age. Um more like young girls suffer complications in childbirth. Women are not ready to raise kids until they're like out of psychological development which ends at like 24 and there's like this obsession 
<laughs> I'm saying like, well, here's a picture of a nine-year-old and a 30-year-old that I found from the 1800s. So therefore, this must have been the norm. It was never the norm to marry a fucking nine-year-old. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad raping a nine-year-old, Aisha, his favorite wife, uh, should be something that is held in scorn and ridicule. And instead, the modern day right, and, and this is this is like, it's going to tank it's it's like it's going to tank any kind of conservative resurgence because you can't you cannot mix pedophilia in for two reasons not only is it morally reprehensible to the average person but it's also extremely alienating to women and you cannot have a movement in the modern day in democracy with enfranchised women and hate women and talk about raping teenagers you just can't do it and I will remind people, I will, today I will remind them once again that Germany was one of the first countries in the world to enfranchise women. They did it during the Weimar Republic. And with the ascent of women, the NSDAP beat out communism and elected Hitler and, and passed the Enabling Act by popular consensus. They put out that vote to uh, enable him to be uh, uh, the Reich president and also the Fuhrer at the same time. And that was passed with 80% of the women's vote. So you cannot tell me that women are just anti-conservative at all times. And by the way, I think the age of consent in Germany is like 13 years old. And Germany has one of the lowest uh, um, uh, birth rates, at least among ethnic Germans in the entire world. So you can't tell me that lowering the age of consent also fixes the birth rate because it doesn't. The issue is um, that modern conservatives don't do what the Nazis did. The Nazis had uh, facilities for women, and they pushed the idea that without children, there is no future. It's, uh, there's an expression for it. And modern conservatives who, who love Hitler, who love the Nazi party, don't replicate this because they're incels, and they hate women, and they want to rape kids that can't, that can't uh, fight them off or have independence. And it's, it's a big fucking problem. Okay. Uh, and I, I really don't know what to do, but I, I watch this and I think this is like really depressing to see all these people aligned on this idea that what we really, the real fix to society is teen pregnancy. If we can just skyrocket, we can spike those teen pregnancy numbers. The white race is finally saved. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not, it's not going to help. White, like teen Moms, uh, kids born to, to, to teenage mothers are poorer, less educated, and less successful. You don't want uh, incapable parents for your next generation because they're just going to be better slaves. <sighs> My Nazi raising, yes. They're up in this. It does sound like controlled opposition, and it's very frustrating. I, I beg of you, if you're one of these people and you are trying to find a white pill, do not listen to nick fuentes do not join the fucking sussy squad do not think that what you really need is a 13 year old japanese slave wife to bear your nine thousand children because uh the rates of divorce are higher uh the unhappiness in marriage is higher the the effects on the kids like you, they they take out their dungeons and dragons thing and they try to min max their fertility rate only the fertility rate and they don't give a fuck about the after effects or their own personal happiness or if their kids are going to resent them because they min max the fertility rate and got a uh, teenager pregnant and then uh, resented them their entire life and trooned out like Elon Musk's kid did. You want to see what happens when you min max fertility rate? Look at Elon Musk's oldest son, who's now a woman, who is now the reason why Elon Musk sees about trannies on Twitter. Not because of any ideological reason, but because uh, he got fucking punked by his own kid. Yeah, having to explain why this is, is, it's just, it's really depressing, chat. Um, red flag, it's all about your kids, not you. You don't matter. You're fucking 30. If you enter into a relationship that makes both you and your wife miserable, how do you think that affects your children? Like... Why do I have to explain this? I want parents that fight and hate each other and are two generations apart and have nothing in common. Said no child ever in the history of mankind. Ah, oh, fuck off. Oh. 
Okay. Are you listening to Razor Fist? No, I'm not. Um, I have Razor Fist. I have trouble taking Razor Fist seriously because he got into that spat with his Mexican girlfriend and then lied. And when she called him a cumer by hijacking all the social media to post that he's masturbating in the bathroom when she's uh, doing stuff. And then he lied and said that was a totally a prank, bro. And then he also immediately got rid of her and he has never mentioned her ever since. And I find it really hard to take someone like that seriously uh, when they lie to my fucking face. Like I'm a fucking retard and I don't know what's happening. Wait, what? Look it up. He uh, had a Mexican girlfriend like two years ago. She hijacked his phones, said that uh, my boyfriend loves to be anti-pornography, but then when he's in the bathroom, he jerks off the pornography while I'm waiting to have sex with him outside as if I don't know. And then he deleted the tweet, said that he didn't have two-factor authentication, so he got hijacked. And then um, that woman just disappears completely from his life. Do you guys not know this? Oh, my God. God effing Sneed. Yeah, that's right. Lied to my face. Well, not to my face. He just said it on the internet. He, I didn't talk to him. But if I had asked him, he would have lied to my fucking face. He would have told me that. No, it's totally that. Didn't care. Okay. I mean, you can listen to whatever the fuck you want to. I'm just saying that it's really hard for me personally to take him seriously when that happens. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.